Hey, this is Julian with Sona Milson. Uh, I just wanted to take you guys through what some of what we pack to uh, Milson West or a multi-day event, typically over 48 hours. So we just kind of wanted to take you through uh, what we pack and uh, hopefully you can kind of learn something. Now this isn't uh, saying this is the only way to pack, but this is just an example of how we like to pack, learning from our past experiences and things that we've done uh, from our past games. So we're gonna start out on the outside of the pack. Um, the idea with rucking or even hiking is you want to put the lighter stuff on the outside of the pack and we like to challenge ourselves to put everything in our packs internally so we don't have stuff hanging on the outside, rattling around. Uh, as you can see, this is strapped down, everything's internal. Starting with the outside, you have your lightweight, you have food, granola bars. We like to pack at least one hot meal per night. In this case, it's uh, granola with milk and blueberries. That'd probably be a breakfast. We also got, uh, let's see, hot vittles. I recommend these. This is what I use. Um, they're an independent company. The guy that makes these is actually a retired chef. Very low in sodium, but definitely high in calories. You get 465 calories and that small package. This is bacon baked beans. Uh, cliff bars, you like to bring multiple cliff bars. These will probably be your breakfast uh, and snacks most days. Um, I've even had to eat these for dinner, so you know, have a variety of these. Protein bars, always good. Um, you don't have an opportunity to eat a lot of meat. Typically I also bring a large package of jerky to snack on, eat throughout the day, uh, even for dinner sometimes if I need to. Next level to pack, we have Folding e-tool, it's always good to have for building entrenchments, fortifying your patrol base. Let's start at the top here. This is typically where I keep my medical and um, hygiene essentials. Dead patch so people know where it is. Um, camp toilet paper. We've been lucky enough to have porta potties at most of our events. So I like to bring extra toilet paper. Campers wipes. Um, you know, you can get these pretty much any store. These are one white Charlie's. So these have a little bit of mint in them. They still kind of nice after a long day. Paracord, um, always got a paracord on you. This is healthy for tying its gear down. You can build shelters with this. Indispensable. And all the MSW events we've been to so far, they've provided us with water for the entire event. Um, I always like to keep a water filter on me just in case. In case I'm out in the field, I need extra water. We're black on water. That way we don't have to hike all the way back to the PB just to reflow on water. Um, this is a Sawyer Mini. I think it's an REI for you know, 20, 30 bucks and they're good for I think 100,000 gallons. So one of the best ones out there for the price. Real world med kit for real world stuff. You know, you got your little boo-boo kit out here, band-aids, trauma shears. Uh, inside we have your full accoutrements of bug sprays, sunscreens, um, you got some hand sanitizer in there, chapstick, you know, Tums, Advil, motion sickness, allergy pills, uh, bandages for spraining ankles, um, I mean anything you really need to take care of most medical emergencies on the field. I like to include a little flashlight here in case it's late to get the pack to see what you're doing. Now, the next level, the compartment. Right. Glow sticks, I don't usually like to organize them in the internal wall right here. Uh, spare can of green gas, I always like to carry one of these. Uh, I haven't used an entire one at an event yet, uh, but it's good to have. This is something new I'm going to try out this, this time around. Uh, just a little piece of foam I've cut out of an old sleeping mat. You know, when you're up at 4 o'clock in the morning, on watch, you're sitting on a cold hard ground, um, you're gonna want a little bit of insulation. Watch cap, keep your head warm at night. Just a fleece jacket, always good to have again when you're sitting, not moving at night, keep your warm. Now, 
sleeping bag. I use the Big Agnes and Camden 15 degree. Um, obviously, it's not very military color, but we'll get back to that. Uh, nice thing about this bag is it actually doesn't have any insulation on the back. So this is the type of bag that requires you to have a sleeping pad of either a foam or a blow up or otherwise. Um, saves about a third of the weight on filling because it doesn't have any insulation in the back. Earplugs, a little blow up pillow, it's just for comfort. A lot of the guys are okay just rolling up their um, jacket or whatever else. This is just a little uh, comfort item in the field, kind of helps. All right. Spare socks t-shirt and extra skivvies. So I'm sure everyone's seen this. Simple range of roll, includes a t-shirt, two pairs of wool socks, and skivvies. Keep, keep, keep it dry. Extra bladder. Fortunately, I've never had to use this, but uh, if we're running low on water, or water resupply is not gonna be a common thing. Fill this up, bring it with you. This is a source that makes some of the best hydro out there. Um, this is also good for if for some reason your main bladder pops or breaks, you have a backup. Uh, I like to go you know, with the concept of two is one, one is none. So we always try to have a backup. Spare on four mag. If one of your mags breaks in the field or you lose it, you always at least have one extra. So again, two is one, one is none concept. Spare bolt, again, always have spares for everything. Uh, the nice thing about using the LM4 system is you don't have to crack open gearboxes. Usually if something's gonna break, it's contained within this piece here. Um, so I keep an extra on me. Left side. Spare bottle of water. Now I like to go in the field with at least two and a half liters plus an extra 500 milliliter water bottle. Um, this helps for refilling your hydro if you really need it or for cooking, which is my primary use. That way I'm not having to drain water out of the bladder to cook. Just a little mess kit, customer extra cliff bars, um, shot blocks, a lot of our guys will use these to keep their energy up, kind of uh, keep your sugar levels up. Um, another thing I like to include in my mess kit is Top Ramen. Um, is that healthy for you? No. Does it have a lot of protein? No. But if you're cold, you're hungry, it's quick, it's light. My GSI outdoor stove. Um, a lot of this stuff is going to be civilian kit, but we found that a lot of the civilian kit's much nicer than the military standard issue. So we went with uh, a lot of civilian kit. So your GSI stove has your entire kit contained within it, your actual burner propane canister, uh, and you can actually use this as a koozie for hot soup or whatever else. Um, yeah. Cooking bag for my hot fiddles. Um, unlike the Mountain House meals, hot fiddles are only in a just a freezer bag, so this helps cook them a little bit faster. This is my X-Pen Synat 7. This goes with my sleeping bag, and it's a simple blow up mat. It's about two and a half inch thick. Nice thing about it is it includes a built-in hand pump here so no need to blow it up. Simply pump up with a hand pump. Saves a lot of time and uh, helps pull on the life of the mattress. Around the other pontoon we have hard shell. Um, when it starts raining or there's heavy fog it's gonna be nice to have something that's gonna keep you dry. Uh, in this case, this is a large, so this will actually go over my entire kit and help keep all of me dry, and uh, that way I don't have to try and take gear off. Uh, here we have probably one of the only standard pieces of kit, military issue-wise. You have your basic MSS Vivi, Gore-Tex, waterproof, breathable, swing bag, mat, all goes inside here, zips up nice, and uh, this is what I'll typically bring to an event. I also have a small one person tent uh, if I'm doing more of a static roll. Again, the concept with this bag was to go light and compact. Tied everything down, I have multiple strap down points so nothing's moving. So 
that's just one of the ways we like to pack for an event. Hey, this is uh, Justin here from Soda Mill Sim. I'm going to give you just another angle on uh, how we pack for an MSW or extended uh, mill sim event. Um, as you can see, my pack is a little bit larger than Julian's. This is actually based on the big brother to, her, uh, to his uh, Everly Stock half track. This is the Everly Stock Terminator F4. Um, a little bit larger. This is about 5,000 cubic inches. Um, you know, and the risk you run with getting a bigger pack this size is the, the larger you pack, the more you tend to carry. Uh, a smaller pack, uh, assuming it's not too small, will at least constrain you to only bringing what you really need. Um, some of the things in here you might find a little excessive. Um, I'm a pretty avid backpacker. Uh, this pack and most of the equipment in it has gone with me um, for you know a couple hundred miles in the uh, Cascades, and so I'm, I'm pretty comfortable carrying this amount of weight. Um, the total pack weight's around 46 pounds wet. Um, so anyway, let's take a look at what's inside. Starting on the outside, like, like what Julian said, you want to keep your light things on the outside, heavier things close to your back. We'll go ahead and open this pouch up. You'll see this is where I have my uh, freeze-dried meals. Uh, we got some oatmeal uh, for breakfast. Actually, that's chili mac. <laughs> Should have oatmeal. We have uh, one of my favorite meals. Uh, it's a backpacker's pantry pad thai. Uh, 920 calories in this pack. It's vegan if that's your speed. Um, but mostly I get it because it's just really tasty. It comes with um, some peanuts and, and some peanut butter, and it's just really, really good. Um, actually, have uh, two of those in there. Like to be able to have two hot meals. Um, sometimes what you'll find out in the field is that you don't have time for a hot meal. You're on a mission or something like that, and you just break in the fields. So you want to make sure you have plenty of ghost snacks, jerky, nuts, that sort of thing to keep you going when you can't sit down and break for a hot meal. But when you do get the luxury, it's nice to have. This pack here has a couple of smaller um, tools inside. The first one is my mess kit. This has um, some silverware, smaller snacks. Uh, this is uh, spices, tea, things like that. Um, some spare stack bars. Noon tablets for energy on the go. Um, we will talk about the little bottle of scotch in there. This one here is some more tools. We have some small pieces of paracord. A lot of these are actually already cut for um, strapping down tent, things like that. Um, a little bit of fire starting gear. It's not something you typically need. Um, always have a big contractor trash bag. This is good for picking up um, your area and policing up after others who don't bring one. A spare glow stick. And then I have some other odds and ends like um, some tent stakes. Spare rechargeable batteries. Uh, spare flash card. Uh, spare cell phone, things like that in here. Uh, you might ask why I need a spare cell phone. Uh, sometimes in our role doing LRS, we like to send data. And that is actually a, a Sprint phone. And I'm on uh, T-Mobile, so I like to have a phone that has uh, data on a different uh, CDMA versus GSM network so I can um, send data if I don't have T-Mobile service. Let's get into the top of the pack here. Got a spare an Gay smoke, spare hydration bladder, this is a Camelback Armorback, it's 102 ounces. Garmin Rhino 655T GPS, uh, this GPS also supports pulling, so any one of my, uh, on my platoon that's uh, similarly equipped, we can track the position of each other over GMRS on the screen so I can see where someone is. This is particularly handy if you're trying to keep track of uh, the main movement of a squad, if you're a squad leader, um, and sending that back up to um, your higher ups. Spare safety glasses. I've run into issues before where I've stepped on, loaned out, or broken my existing glasses, and this thing have a, a hot spare. Um, Leatherman multi tool. This is a Leatherman charge, um, but I recommend having a multi tool. They're good to have. Headlamp with a uh, red lens. Good for signaling. Uh, the red's great for low light. If you're around camp, you want to exercise some good light discipline. Um, you're going to your pack or whatever it is, not have to have a bright white light. Uh, red doesn't travel very far at night. I do have uh, a compass, um, which I can use, you know, in, in conjunction with a map and a protractor if my GPS is down for some reason. And this is actually a, a topographical map of one of our most recent AOs. Let's go ahead and bust into it.
In this pouch here, I don't have any cool Ranger rolls or anything like that. I do have some spare socks, a head warmer. Uh, this is a uh, REI a wind still um, shell. It's got a built-in hood. It doesn't provide any insulation, but it is fully windproof. Further down in here, I have uh, top and bottom thermal base layer. Uh, this is great for night operations when you're going to be out there, maybe doing some observations. It's going to be cold. Good to have multiple layers to insulate yourself again. Um, I also have, if necessary, I have a full ski mask. Um, this is also great for keeping warm. Um, I've ran into some situations where I've slept without a tent, so be able to have something to cover my face uh, was really nice. Opening up the main pouch. First things first, on the inside I have a spare um, 4.7's AA tack light. I have a 100 feet of paracord and also a spare carabiner, which you can use for hanging things up. Um, this is a Gold Zero Nomad 7 solar panel. It uh, provides 7 watts of power um, in direct sun. It can charge a smartphone or something like that in about 3 hours. On the inside I have some um, assortment of charging cords for charging GPS's, cameras, GoPros, that sort of thing. Um, a battery pack that will also charge off the solar. This can recharge your phone at night or you can use the double A's inside. Um, one thing that's worth pointing out is I've standardized all my gear, uh, my radio, my GPS, my flashlights, etc. Uh, all run on double A. So no matter what I have, my double A's can run. Uh, the only caveat to that being my headlamp which runs on triple A. Spare mag. As Julian talked about, very important to have just something in your kit, you know, in case one of your mags breaks. You, my problem is I like to break the feeders on these pee mags. A single can of green gas. Um, been to enough games now that I know that I probably won't even go through one can at a game, but it's nice to have, especially if someone else needs some or you get into a really unexpected firefight. Uh, I need to recharge your mags. This is my toolkit for my own four. It's got a spare bolt in it, a toothbrush for cleaning sand and gunk. A set of Allen keys, um, lots of zip ties, cleaning pads, um, really useful for picking out jams. I got a set of dental picks in here as well. Um, a microfiber cloth for cleaning, and also some robo grips, great for loosening or tightening nuts and things like that. This is a Thermarest Z Light pad. I'm sorry, this is a Thermarest uh, Xterm pad. It is a three and a half inch pad that provides an R value of 5.9, so it's a very warm pad. Um, I bought this uh, for most of my hiking and camping. It's worked well for MSW games. The only caveat to that being uh, that the material is kind of crinkly, and you know if you're trying to maintain some sort of stealth, that can kind of work against you. Um, however, it's very durable, very warm, uh, great pad to have. This is my stove. As you can tell, it's a rather large stove. Uh, this is a, also an MSR product. This is called the MSR Reactor. It's a 1.7 liter pot. Um, the stove fits inside as well as the fuel canister. They mate together and this thing sits on top. Uh, the unique design on the bottom of it basically acts as a jet, like a jet turbine basically, and uh, you can boil uh, about one liter of water in here in about a minute and a half. Uh, this is a really useful tool for cooking for a fire team, maybe even a squad. Uh, one thing that we found is it's, it's useful to maybe split up the needs, have one person carry the stove, something like that. That way all four guys on your fire team don't have to carry a stove. This is a sand splint. Um, generally, if you need to put a splint on somebody, you can be fashioned other things in your environment. Still useful to have. Um, we've actually had a guy on our team that wrapped his night vision in this to keep him safe when he wasn't using them. So um, it's lightweight, it's durable, and it has multiple purposes. And here we have a uh, Rothko soft shell with a hood. Um, it's a pretty warm jacket, it's not waterproof, uh, but it's a, this is actually a large. It will go over my plate carrier and everything else. So if we're doing something at night and I need to have a little extra warmth, uh, this has been indispensable. This is just a little teeny tiny um, trowel for, for digging cat holes. Um, generally we have uh, port johns on site. This can be useful for other purposes. I wouldn't use this like an e-tool to you know, fill sandbags or anything though, obviously. Not gonna front, that's some battery fire Christmas lights. That's just a, that's just a thing, don't worry about that. Um, toiletries kit, very useful to have. Uh, toothbrush, deodorant, um, lotion. Gold Bond. I've had more than one person borrow this Gold Bond off of me for foot problems, uh, especially if you're, you know, got wet socks and you're getting, you know, foot fungus going on or whatever. Uh, very useful to have. 
Uh, there's also some wet wipes there tucked into the back. Up top here, you're going, what the hell does this guy have a tablet for? Um, this is actually a Windows 8.1 Pro tablet. Um, very useful for uh, LRS stuff, mission planning. Uh, it's got a 4G broadband card in it, as well as a GPS, so we can do all of our mapping and strategic planning on this prior to going into a mission. Um, that's been useful more than once. And also we have um, my real world med kit. Um, epinephrine injector here for allergic reactions, surgical shears. On the inside, it's kind of earned a reputation as being a bit of a pharmacy. Got the usual stuff, bug spray, tweezers, things like that, um, antibiotics, um, benzoin compound for dressing wounds, um, sunscreen, very important to have sunscreen. Small stuff like uh, antacid tablets, medical tape, um, eye wash. We've got two individual containers of eye wash if someone you know, gets something in their eye. Uh, we've actually had incidents in the past where people have had um, BBs shatter through mesh goggles. Never had to use it for that purpose, but it's there. Um, ibuprofen and also uh, some Zyrtec in there. Um, blood clotting sponge as well as uh, Z-Pak bandages for larger wounds. Not something you're very likely to see. Um, very important is moleskin. Uh, this is great for treating uh, blisters, and you basically use this around a, a blister um, as it's happening. Kind of helps you uh, avoid that. Uh, this is more like boo boo kit stuff, band aids, and whatever. I also have some oral rehydration salts if someone gets dehydrated, which we have seen in games, along with an assortment of other antidiarrheals and Motrin. On to the pontoons. This pontoon here has my sleeping bag in it. Obviously not a very Milsim color. Um, I wish I could do something about that. I bought this bag a while back. It's a Mountain Harbor uh, Ultra Lamina Zero. It's a zero degree bag, so it's uh, overkill for warmth. And obviously the bright color can kind of give things away, so you better hope you have a good bivy or something to hide it in. Um, depending on the game, I do have a lighter uh, bag I will take. The other pontoon here has ground cover, some more tarps and paracord for my tent. Um, this ground cover also works standalone. Uh, it's a nice neutral kind of tan color, and I can use just this ground cover with some stakes um, as a lightweight sleep system if I want to put this in my day pack or something. And if we're setting up, you know, observation or something like that, I have a nice um, MSR Nook 2 tent. Um, it's uh, the rainfly is kind of a, a flatter green color, um, and again, not mill spec, but it's what I had to work with at the time. I also carry. Uh, Abaco, that's just the Corona model saw. It's a 10-inch saw, um, useful for if you want to, you know, cut down some trees, maybe build a fortification or something like that if the AO allows it.